Hello and welcome to the RAST Network. What you're about to hear and see is limited to general financial information only. Please be sure to speak to your financial planner or refer to our financial services guide available at rask.com.au slash FSG before acting on the information. Kate Campbell, welcome to this extremely very special episode of the Australian Finance Podcast. It only happens once a year. It only happens once a year. And this is how many times instalment? What iteration, edition is this? This is the fourth instalment. We're doing 24 ways to save and invest in 2024. We have done it in 21, in 22, in 23, and we're bringing it back because it's always super popular. It's a lot of fun and we're just going to bring a lot of ideas your way to get you thinking about different things you might like to try, experiment with, set as your own goals for the year ahead because we all need a little bit of inspiration sometimes. Okay, so some of these things are quick saving tips, other investing, others are fi- personal finance or financial planning-esque. Um, so this is a bit of fun. Always one of the most popular episodes that we do for the year. You will be able to find last year's installments and the year before that and the year before that in the show notes. I think there are two things that have gone down in Australian finance podcast history. One of those is splitting uh, one large coffee with your significant other instead of buying two small ones. Save yourself the money, get the same coffee shot. That comes courtesy of Kate's parents, I believe. Uh, and the other one was how Kate used to put, was it fish fingers or something in the, the freezer and eat them and just whip them out? Um, I would put them in the oven first. <laughs> yeah, don't eat them. <laughs> I've <frozen>. elevated <laughs> now to uh, what my sister calls fish hands, but those crumbed bird's eye fish fillets that you can uh, get for half price, often at the supermarket, put it in the freezer, easy way to have a last minute meal if you're feeling unmotivated. Instead of jumping to Uber Eats, make yourself a nice crunchy fish wrap, fish sandwich, just fish and chips. I just love how you said crunchy, like you had me there. Oh, it um, is very crunchy. Yes. I'm sure you can get the steamed fish, but who oh, wants that? Nah, crunch. Anyway, That's not included in our list of 24 ways to save and invest in 2024. We have 14 ways to save and 10 ways to invest. Um, Let's begin. We're only going to spend one to two minutes on each one because we've got a lot to get through. Lucky number one. Try before you buy and save money. So, so many different places have free trials or really low cost trials from Disney Plus to Fitness First, all sorts of different providers. So, whether it's Mm -hmm. a streaming service, it's a software program you want to use on your computer, it's a gym. Just don't do this to your small local business. But if it's a big conglomerate, go for your life and use the free trials and the low cost trials, especially if you're looking for something you're not sure what's the right fit. Save a bit of money by using the trial first. Yes. Uh, And one of the things you can do is uh, for brokerage accounts, you can use a try before you buy method. It doesn't cost you anything to open a brokerage account with most of them. See the T's and C's. Uh, This is a great way to do it. Uh, I remember us talking recently. Uh, I recently tried the Spotify premium subscription. uh, And what I did was I got about a month or so for free. At the time that I signed up, I set a reminder to say, review Spotify on this day. You say, hey Siri, can you set a review, I set a reminder for me on this day, day before the subscription falls due, just review it, try before you buy. Number two, make use of the rewards programs that come with your memberships. So many places from your phone and internet provider, I know Telstra do this quite a lot with movie tickets, your super fund, your bank, they offer rewards or discounts Mm -hmm. inside of the platform. So make use of it. There's probably something you pay for that offers rewards, cheap movie tickets, discounted gift cards. So have a look, see where you can save money, especially if you're going to spend it anyway. Yep. I know that places that uh, offer cash back and these types of things, often you can sign up and you can become part of their loyalty program, um, which may just be a simple newsletter. Yeah, and cash you rewards discounts. is yep. also a great option. Yep, make the most of it. Um, if you bank with Macquarie, CBA, uh, if you're with a health fund like NIB, uh, if you're with uh, like the Royal Automobiles Mo- Mo- Association, so like RACV, RACQ, and RMA, these types of things, go and check them out. You'll get discounts on gift cards or whatever the case may be. Number three. Crush your bills. This is something that has to keep coming up every year because – It is something that we all need to be reminded of, but put a reminder in your calendar every six months to just do a review of all of your key bills. Sometimes you can't change, like I only have one option for water. I can't go and find a a better water deal. But when it comes to things like electricity or NBN, my phone plan, my Mm -hmm. health insurance, 
there's usually a chance that I will find a better deal available. So loyalty is rarely rewarded when it comes to finance and things like insurance. So go hunting, mm. find a better deal. Um, and you may even be able to pay up front for a discount. I know some of even like council rates, sometimes if you pay up front, you get a discount rather than paying in installments throughout the year. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you can even do that with Amazon Prime. Uh, you can pay ahead, save. Why not? Uh, and if you know you're going to spend it, use it. Uh, use that, I guess, that discount that's available too. I think the big things that shouldn't be automated are things like uh, your car insurance and those types of things where you can often get a much better deal just by shopping around. Set the reminder. You don't have to do it all at once, uh, but give it a crack. And even just picking up the phone sometimes lands you a better deal when you say, hey, I've found this better rate. Are you able to match it or come close to matching it? And sometimes they'll come to the table. Mm, absolutely. Next up, my uh, stepdad sent me a, uh, a message the other day saying, how do I sign up for Facebook? I said, what do you want Facebook for, mate? And he said, because I want to look on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, we've talked about m this many times this year is the idea of selling things online, but also buying things online through Facebook Marketplace, through um, Gumtree, through all of these local community groups, buy, swap, sell, these types of things. So much available online. And it's always the case, Kate, that you don't think it's worth anything until you put it online and someone makes you an offer. And then you realize you put too low of a price on. Yes. But there's also other ways to sell things around your house that you might not need. Yeah. Uh, one of the things Monique mentioned to me was the IKEA buyback scheme. Monique. So if you want to get rid of something that came from IKEA, there's certain items that they'll take back and you'll get credit. Credit. Yep. She gives a nod. So there are so many things that you can do. I've got a friend who I think is like, just Lewis, if you're listening, Probably not. But if you are, mate, kudos to you. Props to you. Absolutely unbelievable skills when it comes to finding things online. Bought a wonderful chainsaw the other day. Got it for free. He thought he'd need to replace a few parts. Just started it. <laughs> put, put fresh fuel in it. It works. Got a whippersnipper for 140 bucks. Um, you can buy and sell online and save yourself a lot of money. A garage sales back in fashion? I still see the signs every now and again. Okay. Well, maybe you'll find a good bargain there. But here's his secret to buying and selling online. I asked him, you seem really good at this. You're like an A+. Plus. And he said, the only thing you need to do is be persistent. That's all you got to do. You just got to be there when things are available to sell or things are available to buy. You're there, ready to go. And the summer's a good time. Everyone's around home a lot more. So if you do have things you're ready to sell, often it can be hard to line up time to meet with the person who wants to buy it, especially if they want to have a look or it's furniture and they have to move it from inside your house. So mm. consider if that's something you can do during January. Yep. Two pro tips, take good photos. The other one is beware of the scammers. If they reply to you in 0 0.2 seconds after your ad is up, it's probably not real. Yeah, um, and if they give you some sort of pay ID confirmation receipt but you don't see the money instantly in your bank account, that one's been going around a little bit this year. The old watch your careful. PayPal login, don't give it to them. Um, just get the money in your bank account. That's the way to go. Make sure they're genuine. All right, the next one, Kate, on our list. This is one is a discovery for me this year, but getting Ooh, on your local council's mailing list. Your local council runs heaps of free activities if it's anything like mine. My council was running gardening workshops for free. They had a food pantry. They have a toy and a tool library. So you can just borrow a drill if you just need to finish one piece of IKEA furniture and you don't really want to own a drill. Um, hmm. And there's just space to study. You can borrow books. They often have access to free online resources where you can listen to audio books for free and read ebooks. So there are so many great activities. They might even have uh, local groups that offer free yoga classes and things. So just get involved, sign up. You don't know these things are happening half the time. So unless you're on the list, you won't know. So sign up to that, sign up to your local library and just get involved. I noticed that with my local council, I'd only been in there a couple of times since I've lived in the area, literally like my whole life. Um, but I went in there the other day and I realized that they actually have free computers and printers for you to use. So you can just go in there and use them. Uh, and that's good because I don't have a printer at home. I haven't for years, but sometimes you still need to print things off. They're there in the council office. So see what's available, see what's around, go and ask the questions. They'll probably be relieved to have someone walk in that's not complaining about something on their nature strip or something to this effect. Uh, so make the, make the most of it. Sign up to the newsletter. Find a better deal on your health insurance. Yep. So if you do have private health insurance or you're thinking about getting it, it's quite a competitive landscape between all the different providers. Mm. So you can definitely shop around. There's comparison sites like Choice, iSelect, 
private health, I think that's the government one, yep. where you can compare. It's They've become a little bit more standardised. The government's brought in a lot of rules to stop mm. it being too confusing for consumers. But again, there's always a lot of different packages, especially with extras for things like dental. And this package might include X amount or cover 60% mm. or uh, like my private health provider, NIB, if I go to their specific dental I don't have to pay a gap, so I can go and have the dental appointment completely free. But if you go somewhere else, it's different. So they're all specifics. So it does take a little bit of time to research. I think just going into it, thinking about what you actually want and use in your extras to make sure you get the right service for you. And you might not even want extras if it doesn't make sense. Yeah, this is kind of one of the mystery, kind of like the black holes of health insurance is which hospitals and which clinics are aligned with my health insurer. A lot of times you don't know. You have to go to the website or even have to give them a call and say, hey, I'm thinking of getting this done. Is there somewhere local that I can go that is aligned with you? Because it can actually mean the difference between no gap or just a dramatically lower fee. And you don't always know in advance. Privatehealth.gov.au is fantastic for reviewing the core hospital cover, but the extras cover is something different. And that's where things can get a bit uncertain. Like, is it dental? Is this thing covered? Is that a fissure seal or is that a filling? Like, what's the code for that? I don't know. So get all of these things in advance and just plan accordingly, particularly if you're going for a checkup. And they often have waiting periods as well. I mean, that makes a difference, though, if you do go to the dentist each year. Like, I didn't have to pay anything when I went for my appointment this year, but my friend, who pays a similar amount in private health cover and extras, and it looked similar, didn't go to – we've had a different provider and had to pay about $150 or $200. So Mm. it does make a difference. Absolutely, it does. Um, and if you're like anything like Kate and I, who wear glasses, take notice of the optical. Um, make sure you're seeing it correctly before you sign up. Let's see what I did there. <laughs> Next one is get the cost of fuel for your vehicle under control. If you're anything like me, you probably like the 7-Eleven app, which links with your Velocity Loyalty Rewards program and allows you to lock in the fuel price that is lowest in your area. Saves probably 50 to 100 bucks a year for me. Um, and it's really helpful, but it's not the only way to do it. No, there's also an app called Fuel Spy. Mm-hmm. And we've heard, I think there's an RATV one, a Revo or something like that. I'll, yes, there is. I'll make yes. sure I link it in, on the the, podcast, yes. in the notes. But they um, different ways to keep the costs under control. Especially because the cost of fuel is just through the roof at the moment. Anyone that's traveling over Christmas will know this, that uh, price of fuel is... Long gone are the days when it was 70 cents a litre. And back in the day when you could get gas, if you drove a gas car, it could be 30 cents a litre or something like this. Those days are gone. And um, who knows where it goes from here on in terms of like the shift to electric vehicles and what impact that will have on fuel prices around the world. But in any case, you can lock in a discount. You can join one of those programs. Do be- supermarkets still have those discount things on sometimes, the Sometimes, yeah, on the receipts? back of their receipts. You can get up to four or eight cents a litre sometimes. Uh, The other thing is BP also has a relationship with Qantas where you can earn points there. It all counts. Uh, It's a great program. Um, By the way, if you link your flybys to your Velocity account, that works too. So you can get even more savings. Okay. Save money on dining out using apps. First Table, Eat Now, and Groupon. These apps and websites allow you to either find a restaurant near you that's offering in-the-moment deals like come now and you'll get 30% off. Or maybe there's some incentive for you to try someone new. Yeah, Queenie actually reminded me the other day about First Table because I talked about it on the episode a few months ago but never actually tried it myself. But Mm. they want to have people early in the restaurant, so like the 5 p.m. or the 6 p.m. sitting. So you get a quite a substantial discount if you book the early table through the app. So that's something to look at and see if there's anything near you. Um, and yeah, lots of discounts. I haven't used Groupon for a few years, but Same. I did use it for some great deals taking people out to restaurants before. I love the Eat Now app. I don't know why. I just like the way it feels and how it works. Like if you lock in, uh, if you just search on the map, you can see what's available right now near you. Because unlike some people in the room, I'm not the one who's always the most prepared. So when it comes to picking a spot, I'm always like, huh. What can I try now that's going to save me money? Yeah, even midweek specials, a lot Mm. of restaurants or pubs offer a deal in the middle of the week to get people coming during the week instead of just on the weekend. So if you're thinking, if you can be a bit flexible with when you have the meal, um, happy hours and things worth keeping an eye out for. For sure. Buy refurbished technology products. You don't always have to buy tech products brand new. I recently bought a 
what I would say is a brand new iPhone, but it was refurbed. Sorely needed. Sorely needed. The screen and the back were both cracked on my iPhone, so much so that I had to use sticky tape to keep the glass from falling out of it. Um, so I needed to make an upgrade and I looked on Amazon and I realized I could get a like new used iPhone for uh, about four, five, six hundred dollars cheaper. I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was a huge saving. And then I started looking around. I thought, what else can I get with this used like new kind of thing? You look on places like Facebook, Gumtree, even Amazon for books has pre-opened books. And yeah. Have you ever bought one of those pre-loved books on Amazon? Yeah. yeah. How does it? How do they get the books to people? Well, I don't know because I, I feel where like do they come from? They, they honestly look like they're brand new. Yeah, and they come in a different packaging. If you're familiar with the Amazon box, it still comes in the box, but inside that, there's a different bag. And it, uh, my one was like a forest green color, and it was like it said something about like you know recycling, reusing, and all that sort of stuff. The book looked brand new. Now there mm. are different levels, but you can reuse. And you can find these things online. You're talking about serious savings. If you're an Apple uh, fan like I am, or maybe we are, you can go to an, an authorized reseller and see if there are tech products there that are available for school, back to school periods. You could probably save a lot of money. That reminds me of when I got a, a Kathmandu puffer in winter this year for about a third of the price because uh, they only do it in a few locations, but their store on Elizabeth Street in Melbourne, they had a section upstairs that was refurbished. So if people brought in mm. the uh, and returned something from Kathmandu because maybe there was a faulty zip or there was feathers coming out the side, they would take them back sterilize them, deep clean them, and then refurbish them, and they would be sold for a fraction of the price. So wow. great condition. Uh, it was buyer beware, so something might happen. You couldn't return these items, um, but it was a really good deal, and I've been using it very regularly ever since, and uh, nothing has gone wrong so I far. Respect for you to coming around to the Kathmandu bandwagon. Oh, it, it took it took until this year when I was going to Mount Buller, the snow, to finally buy a puffer. And well done to to get it on a discount as well, because Kathmandu very high quality, but also extremely or well, can be extremely expensive. I have a wonderful sleeping bag from it them. It was very necessary. It was freezing. Yeah, fair enough. Next one, try a free or subsidized government course. I've definitely taken a few of these in my time. It's how I got my diploma and advanced diploma um, through subsidized courses. Yeah, so the government has committed to a further 300,000 fee th free, that's mm -hmm. a mouth twister in itself, uh, TAFE places across Australia over three years from January 2024. So check out your state government's website. They'll have links on information about all the different courses that are available. Hmm. There was everything from a, a diploma in accounting to Auslan to commercial cookery to horticulture to anything you could think of, really. Um, and it will tell you a whole list of all the courses available, where you can study them, and then you can sort of go directly through those providers. So I've included a link to a few of the state government websites, but uh, I'm sure if you give it a quick Google, you'll find more information. Yeah, just Google fee-free and your uh, state or territory, and something should come up. Because basically, the government benefits from you earning more money. And what's one way to earn more money is to upskill or to learn a new skill um, that you can apply in the workforce. I mean, Do there was very few conditions attached to mm. doing this. So most people could go out and learn something new this year if they're keen. And a lot of these courses are quite hands-on. So they probably require a bit of time commitment. Fair enough. Going Harvey's with a friend is something anyone can do if they find the thing that allows them to spend less and still enjoy the experience, Kate. Yeah. A lot of things are priced for two people, whether that's a holiday package, like a luxury escape deal to Thailand that uh, is, what, $1,500, but you have to have a second person. Mm -hmm. um, it could be a produce box, a subscription. I know a lot of people still get away with sharing streaming services or newspaper subscriptions, but if you can find someone to split up the cost, whether it's a housemate, a friend, a sibling, to avoid paying the the single surcharge, basically. Yeah. Give it a crack. Go Harvey's with a friend. I, I think this is really important. Like, If someone has something that you use regularly as a friend, you can chip in. You can help out in some ways. Like, I don't know if someone has you know a four-wheel drive and you go camping with them, you can pay for the fuel or maybe you can chip in some way. So you benefit from having that thing, but you don't have to fork out all the the dough up front. The 10 cent bottle scheme is available in Victoria. Yeah. South Australians is going to be like looking across the border thinking, what do you guys mean it's in Victoria? That's right. Victoria has 
become like South Australia in that you can now recycle bottles. Which is good news for Christmas time. It's good news because a lot of people will be opening in some bottles, I'm sure. So you can now do that uh, in many different ways, yep. but it's good. I've put a link with more details for Victorians since this is mm. a new and novel thing for me. Yes. Uh, and you can Google in your state, is there recycling initiatives up for grabs where you can get paid in this instance? But even here's a pro tip for anyone that's doing renovations or has some things at home. Your local transfer or waste, uh, like your dump, in another word, um, they can actually sometimes take some of your unwanted goods for free. And so you want to check out with your local council, they can actually put on things where they're like, you can bring us all of your green waste for free for this week or something like this. Um, some of them will even take white goods or that type of thing um, at particular periods for free. Yeah. Some councils also offer credits for the number of things. Uh, runs to the tip or to the the dump every year. So yeah. check it out. And my council, I've discovered, offers two hard waste sort of book in collections each year. So yep. as a resident, I can book in if I have a few things that can't be sold or can't be taken to the op shop because they're just too far gone, like a very broken washing line I have. That's something that you can get taken away for free. So have a look. Council website is my discovery for 2023. Heaps of resources on there from the free activities to waste collection. Yep, do it. Um, Making money from your spare things. This sounds like an entrepreneurial journey named Airbnb, where you can actually find something that you have that other people value and make money from it. Yep, whether it's Uber car share, you want to rent your car. With all these things, you probably need to check things like insurance, taxes, what records you need to keep. But Swimply, renting your pool, Parkhound, renting your car spot, Airbnb, of course, there's Gecko if you have event equipment. So there's usually a way you can earn some extra money. And even if you just want to be part of the sharing economy and actually just share your lawnmower with your neighbour. Reduce, reuse, recycle. That's what we've kind of covered so far. Uh, absolutely, make the most of it. Um, you'd be surprised what you can rent out these days through these peer-to-peer networks. Uh, it's actually pretty amazing, to be honest. Or ask your parents or your grandparents, like if you need a spare whisk, they might have three. They might so have a whisk. What a thing to- Speaking from experience. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky number 14 on the 14th uh, spot is a DIY herb garden. So this is the final savings tip before we get to investing. Kate, DIY herb garden. To be honest, I've talked about this savings tip before, but this is the first year I actually have herbs on my balcony. What do you got? So I have basil, I have rosemary, Mm. I have sage, I have thyme. Hmm. There is a tomato plant that has not produced anything edible yet, (laughs) but maybe soon. You know what you need to get next to it? Between all of these is you need a marigold. You can buy these from Bunnings. They're like a little colourful plant and they actually attract all the other insects that allow like the bees and these types of things and pollination to happen. And they're great for your herbs and for your other things like tomatoes in the area. DIY herb garden. If you've got a windowsill, give it a crack. Go to Bunnings, give it some fertiliser, don't overwater it. Um, And especially with basil, it just seems to be growing really well. And even if you go to the supermarket, you can get one of those basil pots. I was going to say that. And if you take a few of the basil stalks out because they really cram them in there and you fertilise it and you make sure you water it and put it on a balcony, it lasts it's lasted for at least two months. Yeah, well, so those are the ones that we're talking about. You get them at Coles and Woolies and They're whatever. They're about $3, which is the same price if you buy the five strands of herbs in one small in plastic, plastic packet. packet. Yeah. So you can buy the pot and you just put it on your windowsill. Just put it in a nice jar or something yeah. like this. It does need some fertilizer. Yeah. I've We've kept ours for probably over a year now. And we've since had offshoots of that type of thing as well. Basil is very hard to grow. So you're better off getting like it from the, the supermarket and just... Away you go. I tried to grow lavender on the balcony, but it did not work. Oh, that would be maybe But a bit that tough. was from seeds, so. Yeah, it's a bit tough. Um, 10 ways to invest in 2024. Here's the second part of this installment. Um, so we've covered our 14 ways to save, maybe a few extras, to be honest. I've probably got about 20 ideas there. Um, now we've got to talk about the ways you can invest in 2024. Let's go on the offensive. Yep. So now you've got a bit of money put aside from saving, hopefully. What do you do with it? We want to pay off any high interest debt. So if we've got a credit card, a personal loan, a loan to friends and family that's pulling us backwards, we really want to focus on paying that off this year. We've got a free getting and staying out of debt course on RASC education you can take. Financial counsellors are a free confidential resource in Australia, which are really helpful. So we'll have 
or just Google the National Debt Helpline. You can talk to them in multiple ways, but it's a really important thing to start with to build your foundations and to start building that habit because you learn a lot through the process as well. Free, 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 free. National Debt Debt Helpline, give them a call. They can connect you. They can chat to you about all different types of things. You have help. It is available to you um, as part of a free incentive from the government. So go and do it. Make the most of it. Get someone else to go onto your side. Like if you're at the, the bakery and you ask for a bit of cheesecake and the person goes to reach for the dodgy piece of cheesecake that's clearly been damaged and you're the type of person that's like, oh, yeah, that one will do. Not good enough. Get someone on your side when it comes to your finances and get them to go into bat for you and give you proper, good, long-term advice. Number two is make sure you're using a high-interest savings account. There are still people out there that have cash in their bank account from last year when interest rates were like zero, and they could look down at their bank statement and say, I'm getting 1%. They just said on the Australian Finance Podcast, you can get 5.3% in interest. Why am I getting 1%? I've had retirees that have hundreds of thousands of dollars say, my brokerage account is not paying me any interest or my cash in the bank is not paying me any interest. And they can do that. Yeah. And you might think you're in a great option that's paying a high interest rate, but there's a lot of hurdles you have to meet every month. So I was speaking to a friend recently who was with ING and thought they were getting a fantastic interest rate, but then they realized when they logged Mm. in that they hadn't been meeting those three hurdles each month with ING, which ING's ones can be quite onerous if you're not staying on top of them and your pay doesn't work. Uh, So really make sure, one, you're picking a great high interest savings account, but two, you can meet the hurdle requirements easily. Yeah, this year we've done quite a few episodes on different term deposits and savings accounts. And the banks that continually appear near the top are Ubank, ING, Macquarie, Up, oftentimes also for transaction and BOQ, probably another one, which is uh, Rabobank, for those of you that are familiar, it's an online-only bank. Um, all of these banks tend to appear near the top, not always. So that's why you need to make sure that you're tracking down which ones pay you good interest and also take note of the T's and C's, like what hurdles do you need to meet every month? Um, I know a lot of people are familiar with the ING savings maximizer product, but you do need to make sure you hit those hurdles like putting money in, number of transactions, et cetera, et cetera. So keep an eye out for those. Um, if you have an offset account, you got a mortgage, get an offset account. If you've got a mortgage and you don't have an offset account, speak to your mortgage broker or speak to ours. A link to Blusk is available in the show notes that says mortgage broking. Speak to the team at Blusk and they'll get you an offset account on your mortgage. It saves you more money because it saves you more money. It's at your mortgage interest rate, which is higher than your savings rate. Kate, this is over to you. The next one is a challenge to book in five happiness boosting activities in advance for the year. So there is a lot of research that says we get a happiness boost just from anticipating activities that are in the future. So looking ahead, if you look in your calendar for 2024 and you don't see anything in there, well, this is a good chance. They don't need to be expensive things. It could Mm -hmm. just be saying to your friends, hey, let's do a dinner party in March and put that in the calendar so everyone knows. So you've got things to look forward to and anticipate. It might be a concert next December, but just thinking about things in advance, maybe you're even planning a weekend away Mm -hmm. with some family in the middle of the year and putting in your leave in advance, but just thinking, well, how can I put five things in my calendar for 2024 that I can look forward to? If you're in Perth and you haven't met a quokka, make sure you get over there and uh, book it in now. If you're in Adelaide and you haven't been to the Brossa and enjoyed maybe some cheese and crackers at a vineyard, go and do that now. Have a birthday party. Have a birthday party. Send out party. invites early. Get the saved dates in. Yes, do it. If you're in Queensland and you haven't swum the reef, it's in your backyard. Come on, New South Wales. Hike the Blue Mountains. It's beautiful. Tassie, get some fresh air. Take a road trip around. Uh, go and visit all the markets. The Salamanca Market is absolutely to die for. In Melbourne, we've got some magnificent beaches in Mel- around Melbourne. Dalesford's a good day trip. Dalesford is a wonderful day trip. Um, wherever I've forgotten. There's basically anywhere you want to go across Australia, there's something beautiful, Northern Territory. You're not far away from some of the world's most pristine parks and, and waterways. Go and make the most of it. Do these things now because you know, you're know you not getting any younger and it's something to look forward to. I remember saying to my mum the other day, stop bringing me stuff around. Don't bring me like little <laughs> knickknacks and things that you think I might want. Instead, 
let's get the family together and go and do something. That would be so much more memorable. And it costs us nothing if we just meet up at the beach and go for a walk or have fish and chips on the beach or something like this. Like as a family, that would be much more impactful. Now, this is a big one. This is more of a technical one for people who haven't done the admin side of their life. This doesn't take long, but it probably is the most impactful of all the amounts of time you could spend after listening to this episode. Yeah. So this is a multi-part one, but the first step is to set up your MyGov account properly. So the first part of that Mm -hmm. is actually setting up your login. So or finding a password. Yep. So that's that's <laughs> sometimes in that that's an achievement in itself because yes. I know the first time setting all that up did take a while and making sure all my details were up to date and doing things like updating your bank account details with Medicare. They have mm. a lot of people's refunds just sitting there because they don't have up to date bank account details to send the refunds to. I had a few hundred dollars. I realized this. Well, not me. My partner realized this yesterday that I have three hundred dollars owing to me and I haven't responded to. It. I didn't realize. Um, but the MyGov account is the government's official account to connect your ATO to your super, to your Medicare, to your, I think it's got Veteran Affairs and they Defense. Centrelink. Centrelink. All these things are connected in this one place. And that's why it's hard to get into the first time. But once you've set it up securely, yeah. it's a breeze. You, you, I think from experience, you have to re- you have to set up each link. Yes, you do. To it. Yeah. yeah. Because not everyone needs, for example- I don't know, Centrelink, or not everyone needs, you know, pensions and that sort of stuff. But you can set it all up yourself. Um, and once you've identified like your device, like your phone or your computer, it does become much easier to log in. But once you're in there, the key thing that we want you to take a look at is the superannuation. Yes. So the ATO has updated the figures this year that there are $16 billion sitting in lost super accounts floating around. So have a look. Usually your super will be attached to your tax file number. So if you go into your MyGov account in the ATO, there'll be a superannuation section. They're trying to make it more prominent so you can see it. Mm. Um, And it should list all the different super accounts you have and the latest balance that might have been updated six or 12 months ago. And then you can start making informed decisions from there. Yeah, you can consolidate your super from right inside MyGov. Just make sure you check your insurance. We're not out here saying, Go and pick a new super fund because your insurance that may be active in there may be lost if you consolidate or if you switch super funds. Always review your insurance cover before you make the switch. Know what you're getting from your new super fund and if any waiting periods or restrictions will apply. That said, even in your current super fund, you could probably make the switch to a more long-term focused growth option. I'll give you an example. A lot of people have read the Barefoot Investor book, probably the best finance book ever written in Australia. And a lot of people say, I'm with Host Plus. I was chatting to Everest Wealth, who has appeared on the podcast recently, one of our financial planning partners at RASC. And Alex was telling me that he sees a lot of clients that come in with a Host Plus superannuation account. But here's the thing. They say, I'm with Host Plus, not realizing that they're actually in the Host Plus balanced option or the My Super option, which has fees of, I think it's over a percent. So if you think about that, your fees for Host Plus shouldn't be as 1%. They should not be. In the book that Scott mentioned in Barefoot Investor, it was an index option, meaning index fund option. That is, I think it's something like 20 times lower in fees. So go and check that out. If you are with any super fund, Australian Super, Host Plus, REST, Hester, whatever the case may be, one of these massive super funds, you need to check what option you have selected. It's not good enough to say, oh, I'm with Australian Super. That only tells you which super fund you're with. It doesn't tell you which strategy you're with. And yeah. that's where the fees are incurred. So I think using that, logging onto the MyGov and looking at where your super is, that's a starting point, but you don't want to just make a change without then going and logging onto your super mm. funds where the money is. You might have two or three, finding out what you're invested in, what your insurances are, and then you can make a more informed decision from there about which fund you want to go with, which insurances you want to keep, if any, and what different fees are available. Because I know just from your screenshot, your high growth is 0.79% total investment fees and costs for the year, and indexed high growth is 0.04%. Yeah. So that's the difference, right? So according to this screenshot that I've got here, it's about 1% for the balanced option of my of um, Host Plus. Um, but the index options are 0.04. So that's where I got the 20 times from. If you think about that, it is so much lower. And some people will say that maybe the balanced option has performed better and it has performed very well. So I'm not picking on Host Plus. I'm picking on people's 
to be honest, I'm picking on people's laziness when it comes to super. This is the one change that costs you nothing and it will have the single most profound impact on your financial future if you are someone that contributes to super through your employment. So go and check it out. Um, something else to look at is the State Revenue Office, the Money Smart website. I've got links in the uh, article that we've got in the show notes, but that has unclaimed money registers. So you might have a lost dividend or mm. payout or something like that sitting there. Have a look for your friends and family. Look up your grandma's name. Look up your parents' name. You might find them a little bit of cash this Christmas, but oh, there is a, a lot sitting there. Um, that's a good reminder, Kate. You can get all, this complete list in the show notes. This, with every yep. one of these episodes that we do, there's show notes and you can get the full list. So we don't expect you to remember everything, but we want you to identify one or two things that you can use. Yep. It's in one head. big Google doc that I'll have linked in the show notes with lots of hyperlinks in it. So everything will be there in one place. Next one, sort out your tax return, get the refund and then do something with the money. You could be sitting on two or $3,000 of tax returns. That could be valuable money that you put towards your mortgage. Put toward, put towards a holiday, put towards your investment portfolio, invest in an ETF, whatever the case may be, that's money that you can do something with, as aka make an investment with. Yeah. And because I use the summer break every year to finally sort out my tax documents and send them over to the accountant, it's always a good reminder that get the things sorted, get that admin out of the way. You don't want to worry about it during the year. Yeah. Easy peasy. Uh, next one, review your portfolio. An ETF comparison is what we did in 2023, where we showed you how to compare ETFs. If you're not familiar with what an ETF is, an exchange traded fund or ETF is basically a basket of something. So you invest in the basket rather than picking the individual shares that go inside it, rather than picking the individual bonds, you get the whole basket. It's like buying HelloFresh, everything's taken care of for you, you get the box delivered. An ETF is the same thing. Uh, we've done a full series on this but just review your portfolio. See where your ETFs are. See what fees you're paying. We had someone write in recently, Kate, who was, in, who was invested in an ethical ETF and they were paying, I think, over 1% in fees and the performance was shocking. So they made the choice to swap out of that into a different ethical ETF. The next one is sort out your investment plan for 2024 and beyond. So the end of the year, January, it's a fantastic time to reflect on your progress for your financial goals during the year. Maybe some things in your life have changed. Maybe you want to change the way you invest. Maybe you're really focusing on property this year, or you really want to increase your emergency fund because you've got some expected life events happening. You want to have a little bit more cash aside. So just reflecting on the year that's been, thinking over the next sort of 12 months, what's coming up and going, well, do I need to make any changes to my plan? Do I need to make any changes to the way I'm investing, to what I'm investing in in the next year? Yeah. Uh, it's not about having a lengthy document. Like a, a financial advisor's plan for you could be 70 pages and some people love that. But when you're doing it yourself, it could also just be a page, a paragraph, something that gives you like a goal, something that gives you a way you're going to move towards that goal. Obviously, if you could spend a little bit more time on it and just a paragraph, that would be good. Like say, where am I going to invest? How much? How am I going to manage taxes? When will I do my taxes? These types of things. Um, the more you can put into it, the better it will be. But um, it basically just makes you feel comfortable when things get un uncertain for you. Um, pick one area of money and investing or investing and learn about it in the year ahead. It's pretty simple to do, Kate. Yeah. I mean, between our business, property, finance and investing podcasts, we have something for everyone there. There is something you can learn on every single topic, really. So I think it's really it's a good idea to pick one topic this year and really dive into it a bit deeper. It might be superannuation, like this is the year you want to really mm. understand it, know what you're invested in and have a plan for long term. Because then once you've done it, it's done. You can review it once a year, but that won't be too onerous and you already have that knowledge. So maybe mm. it's the year you start investing in ETFs, exchange traded funds. Maybe it's the year that you finally figure out that budgeting thing and find a method that works for you. But pick one topic and dive in this year. Yeah. And if you want to, shameless plug, you can join our Rascal community. Uh, there's a link in the show notes. You can join me inside our Rascal community and we basically act as your field guides. We have model portfolios of ETFs. We talk about different shares um, with the whole idea being to educate you. So come along for the ride. You can join us inside Rascal. It supports our business, but it also instructs you on how we'd invest a portfolio right now. The next one is probably the biggest and it almost made me roll over in bed the other night thinking about a family member who had a mortgage 
And he called me and he said, I'm, you told me to look at my bank statements to see what comparison interest rate I'm paying or what interest rate I've got on my mortgage. And it was 7.15%. And I remembered back to speaking to our mortgage broking partners recently. And they were saying it's 6.25 is a pretty good rate right now. And I was like, that means he's paying 10% more than he has to. And this is a hundred, multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars mortgage. We're not talking about, you know, saving, splitting your, your soy cappuccino into two and saving a couple of dollars. We're talking about real money. And it was solved by him just going to the bank. He was with Bendigo Bank in this instance, but it could be anyone. So literally calling them up and saying, hey, this is too high. I'm going to swap if you don't do something. And sure enough, he got the deal and he got the rate down just with one phone call. Well, in this case, just rocking up to the, the branch. If you don't know what a good rate is, look online, shop around. Getting a better interest rate is one of the easiest and biggest bang for your buck things you can do right now. And talking to a mortgage broker can be an option if you don't have the time or don't really want to talk to the bank yourself. Yeah. So with our, uh, shameless plug again, with our mortgage broking partner at Blusk, um, Chris and his team, what they do is, and I love this, is I think it's every year one of their team members automatically review your mortgage and they send you a comparison of the different mortgages that they reviewed and tell you whether to stay or leave. And it gives you in very clear letters like green or red, stay or leave. Now, we got the best the best option for us was to stay this year. And they did a review. They showed us the comparable mortgage rates and they said stay. Uh, and then an option is if you decide to leave, they will actually call the bank and say, hey, what this is too high. Um, we're the mortgage broker for Kate. This is too high. Automatically do it now. People think they need to refinance, which means going through all the loan documents, providing your income. You don't need to do that to get a better interest rate. Oftentimes, your bank will just drop the rate just from a phone call. It is so important. In finance, you do not get rewarded for loyalty. It's the opposite. You're the one that pays the bills. Be on top of it if you can. Finally. The Finally. Lo- the Finally. Last piece. And maybe most importantly. Maybe I don't know. We've talked about something. some very important things. In- but maybe this one, Kate, starts something for people. Maybe this is the, the spark that ignites a lifetime of curiosity. Yeah. If you are new here listening, this might be your very first episode of the Finance Podcast. If so, welcome. But my last thing on this list is try investing with small amounts and you can start with just $5. So Mm -hmm. if your goal is to start sorting your finances out, starting to invest in 2024, start with $5. Set yourself the smallest possible goal. Get a micro investing app. We've got episodes on the show in that. I'll have that linked in the article as well. But just make that goal to start with $5. And then over time, you can increase that to $500 and then $1,000. But don't make it seem super scary. I would set the goal as small as possible just so you can take that first step. And then you build your confidence Mm -hmm. from there. Yep. It's as simple as that. $5. We're in an episode that we did recently, which is linked. We actually tell you all of the providers that do it for this price, but we've got Perla, who's a long-term sponsor of the show. Thank you very much. We've got Sharesies, Comsec Pocket, uh, even some of the other platforms allow you to do it, Raise. These are some of the biggest platforms which hundreds of thousands of people use, uh, and you can actually just start with a few dollars. And if someone refers you like a friend or you know someone that's using it, there might even be a referral link where you both benefit with a few dollars extra. Uh, And go and make the most of these tools while your balance is small, because not only do you have a lower amount of money to lose, which is a good thing, but it also means that you can practice what it feels like. You can get in the the feeling of uncertainty when your small portfolio falls or when it goes up and you feel, oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. It's a great way to reframe that idea that Mm. you too can be an investor. You're invested inside super. You can also invest outside of super. And it's something that's really possible. You can be an owner of the economy and not just a consumer. And I think it's super exciting if you are someone that is brand new to investing to get started this over the next 12 months. Yeah. I just think it's so easy now. It's better than ever time to invest. And the number one piece of feedback that we've had of probably, I don't know, maybe maybe we've done a thousand podcasts across the network. The number one piece of feedback is start early. Like just start. It doesn't have to be a lot of money. It doesn't Small have to bits, be complicated. Lots of times. Small bits, lots of times. Uh, so let's quickly recap. We've got 14 ways to save in 2024. Try before you buy. Make use of the rewards programs that come with your memberships or bank or whatever you're already using. Kate? Compare your bills, call up your service providers, get a better deal, see if you can pay up front. Mm-hmm. 
sell unused items. Uh, it's pretty easy. You might have that chainsaw that my mate bought for free, or you maybe you have his whippersnipper, 140 bucks. He will give you cash for that. There's people out there who want the stuff that's in your house. So look around, see what money you can get from the things that you don't even need or want anymore. Yeah, and buy secondhand as well. Next one, get on your local council's mailing list for heaps of free activities and to be more involved in your local community. Find a better deal on health insurance. Set a reminder in your Apple notifications or your Google Calendar or your Microsoft, whatever it is, set an automated reminder, check insurance. And make sure you have ambulance cover. Make sure, yeah, especially if you're playing sport or you work in an industry that is high risk, like you're a tradie, go and get ambulance cover. It's not automatically included with your private health insurance. Make sure it is covered. Like for example, in Victoria, you need to have separate private, uh, se- separate ambulance cover. Check it out, okay? Get the cost of fuel under control using an app like Fuel Lock or Fuel Spy. Yep. And if you're eating out this Christmas or over the new year, why not use an app to make it cheaper? Eat now, first table, Groupon, they all offer some type of discount or bonus for being part of the network. Buy refurbished tech products or anything really instead of brand new and save quite a bit of money like Owen did. Yes. And if you do try the Amazon uh, ability to use uh, used books like new books, uh, through Amazon, let us know what you've, how you go. Let us know in Spotify or if you just want to write into us, you'll find a link in the show notes. It says, ask a question. You can use that for feedback as well. Kate, are you going to take a course? Uh, I'm already taking a course, so I'm not <laughs> sure if I've got time for another one. But uh, try a free or subsidized government course in the new year. Just Google fee-free TAFE places in your own state and see what's available. Cool. Go Harvey's with a friend if there's something you want to do or something you want to buy or something you want to use. Go Harvey's with a friend. And for Victorians... Make use of the 10 cents bottle scheme. That's something new to us here. Yeah, everyone over in uh, SA is thinking, well, those guys are finally catching up. Make money from the spare things you have. If you've got a spare room, Airbnb. I love the gecko thing. If you have event equipment, who would have thought you can rent that out? Uh, so many other things that you can do. If you've got a car spot, you can make money from that as well. Kate's DIY herb garden is a good savings tactic. Basil on the windowsill is a good way to do it. What about investing, Kate? investing. First, we're going to start by crushing our debts. We're going to pay off any high interest debts. We're going to talk to a free financial counsellor and we're going to take the free getting and staying out of debt course on RASC education. Like it. What's next? We're going to make sure we're in a high interest savings account. And even better, if we've got a savings goal this year, we're going to automate $50 a month, Mm -hmm. $100 a month, whatever it is. Once we get paid, that automatically goes into the savings account. We don't even have to think about it. Things that can be automated should be automated uh, in most cases. What about, how do I buy happiness? Your challenge is to book five happiness boosting activities in advance for the year. So get out the calendar and make sure you've got some things scheduled in. They don't have to be expensive. It could just be dinner with friends, but get those dates in advance. Especially for your busy friends. Book in early. They love that. Um, And if you're interested, buy Kate's book, Buying Happiness Out Now. You can find it on Amazon and wherever you get your books, check it out. Set up your MyGov account. It seems like you're pulling teeth out when you set it up. But once you've got it set up, it is so easy and it makes your life a breeze. You can check your hex balance next to your super balance. You can make sure your bank details are updated for Medicare. So many different things. You can just send a link in there. It's all taken care of. The more you can make use of the government website and avoid going into the actual retail outlet, that makes it your life so much better as well as saving you money and maybe even making you money. Next up. If you haven't already, sort out your tax return from the last year. And if you get a refund, make a plan and do something with it. The key thing Kate's always told me is make sure you know where the money's going. That's all you got to do. It doesn't have to be anywhere in particular. We're not here saying invest it, you know, save it, do whatever. Just make sure you know where it's going. Because otherwise there's a thing called mental accounting, which creeps into the backyard and you start to think, well, it's just money doesn't really matter. Um, next up. We're going to take time to review our portfolio. And if you haven't already done our ETF comparison activity, we've got that linked in the article. But see if you've got any crossover between your ETFs. Make sure your portfolio looks like the thing you want it to look like. Yep. Creating an investment plan might sound daunting when you're new to investing, but it's really not that hard. We're just saying spend less than you earn and where does the money go? We did an episode last year, um, which was really interesting, uh, where we covered like a I guess, what would you call it? A life plan kind of thing. We talked about getting a vision board set up and using that to plan out what you want to do in life and what makes you happy and use that to inform your investment plan. If you want to live on a farm or buy a forest or you know, go around Europe for three months or whatever the plan may be, whatever the goal sorry, is, there's a plan to match that and how you can do that with money. 
Next up. Next one is picking one money topic, investing topic, property topic to learn more about in the next year and really dive deep because once you've got that knowledge, it's yours for life. Yes, we do have uh, one podcast for basically everything at Rask. I've got the Australian Finance Podcast, which you're listening to right now, the Australian Investors Podcast, which is slightly more advanced, focused on a lot of retirement and that type of stuff. We've got the Australian Business Podcast, which says it on the tin, it's about business, and our Property Podcast, which is all about property. All of them hosted by experts in their respective fields, and all of them are free. Refinance your property if you haven't already. Your mortgage broker should do this for you. Remember, your mortgage broker is paid a trailing commission. They get paid up front from the commission when you get the loan, but also every year they make money that you stay with that loan. So make them work for it. Get them to shop around for you automatically. They should do that for you. Uh, finally, Kate. Finally, make this the year that you start investing. Start with just $5. Use a micro investing app and build from there. You get confidence through action. Yes, you do indeed. Remember, you get that confidence by taking a step. You only need $5 to become an investor. And as Tony Robbins would say, own the economy, not consume the economy. So, Kate, there's 24 things on this list, probably half a dozen extra just for fun. People can find all of the links to everything that we've referenced in the show notes. There is a link to a Google Doc that has everything there. You can make your own copy. You can take notes. You can click on all the links we've mentioned, and there's plenty more. So I hope that keeps you busy during 2024. Yeah. There's certainly a lot of ideas. Yes, and if you want to join us inside our membership community, you can come on board and join the Rascor community. There's a link in your show notes, and you can ask me questions on investing each and every day if you and want to. And you can to. share what you're doing in 2024. Share how you're saving money, how you're investing yes. in your future. Yes, come and chat. And you can also get in contact with us on Spotify. You can use the feedback form there. You can also uh, send us an email with your questions for the year ahead. If you've got questions, a podcast is a great way to get answers to those questions, and you can do it anonymously. We don't even want to know your first name your date of birth or your address. We want you to keep it general and we want you to send us a question with a funny name. So get in contact, subscribe to the podcast if you're new here. Give us a big five-star rating too. We'd love that. But Kate, this has been heaps of fun, the fourth year in a row. As always, thanks for joining me. Thanks for listening, everyone.